Um, so let's try to make it short, but interesting and condensated. Um, so the session we are going to to deep now is the one is a high level panel called scaling investment in renewable electricity for industrialization economic development in emerging markets i know it seems a little bit long but <laughs> Uh, let me put some ideas on it. So this is a topic I really like, and you probably have seen me bring in this topic in several panels or conferences, which is that quite often we are talking about energy access, and uh, we often talk also to reach SDG 7. But we tend to forget where the SDG comes. So by D, I mean the development part, and one of the questions I try to ask to people in panels, but even when I'm speaking about these things, is how are we making sure that actually the solutions we are bringing, bringing to the distributed renewable space are really um, being able to enable, uh, being <laughs> enabling of the socioeconomic development? Meaning, in, um, if I provide a TV to a rural area in which they are seeing uh, the Barça Liverpool, is that economic development or is it not? Um, so this is the main topic we want to debate in this session. Uh, so we, the way it's going to happen is uh, I'm going first to ask some questions to every one of each of our panelists. Uh, and that person will be able to explain what they are doing, what is doing, what is his company doing. Then we will have some specific questions. And then I really want to keep like 10, 15 minutes for Q&A. So please don't hesitate to keep your questions. And you will, I will try to make sure that at least there's 10 minutes for Q&A. So thank you very much for your attendance. And let's go with the panel. OK, so I'm back. Um, so here, what I'm going to do uh, for our dearest panelists is, first of all, thank you very much, all of you, for being in this panel. Um, and the second part, I have some prepared questions. So what I want to avoid is really to have a boring session in which we are asking everyone the same question. So I'm going to read three questions for all of you guys. You can pick one of them, you can answer the three of them, or you can even rather choose whatever to say, but the idea is really to, pre to present what you are doing, what is your company doing, okay? Um, so the proposed questions I have is, first of all, could you introduce the work of your organization? I guess that is going to be pretty simple. And especially, uh, what is your organization doing to support electrification for industrialization and socioeconomic development? Second question is, what are the challenges and opportunities associating with scaling up investments? And the third one is, how to mobilize commercial capital from other sectors? So this is, you can choose to answer all of them. At least you need to present uh, what is your organization doing. And also, please provide a little bit about your name and your background. Um, so up to you. Thank you very much, Erin. A pleasure to be here. So I am Fatoumata Sissokosi. I'm manager um, energy and infrastructure in IFC, covering specifically West and Central Africa. I'm based in Dakar. Uh, so IFC, um, International Finance Corporation, or SFE, Société Financière Internationale, it's a part of the World Bank Group and our mission as a DFI, Development Finance Institution, is to promote development, economic development and promote growth um, in terms of um, uh, um, improving people's, uh, people's life. Let me just switch in French. I'll feel more comfortable in French. Um, if it's okay for you, of course. Huh? Is it okay for most of you in the room? Since we're in Cote d'Ivoire, right? So I, I expect people to be speaking French. Okay. No objections, I'll switch in French. Um, donc la, la, la SFI, je l'ai dit, euh, filiale de, de, de la Banque mondiale. Notre euh, action principale, parce que là on est, on est, on est ici présent pour parler euh, évidemment du secteur de, de l'énergie, de l'électricité en particulier. La SFI intervient de façon massive hein, sur les projets on-grid, notamment euh, les projets solaires, scaling solar. Je ne sais pas si vous avez déjà entendu parler de ce programme scaling solar. Euh, C'est un programme qu'on a déployé en Zambie, au Sénégal, il est en cours de déploiement au Togo, au Niger. Bientôt il sera lancé en Côte d'Ivoire et un deuxième programme au Sénégal. L'objectif est de, de proposer en fait un, une approche euh, innovante pour euh, faciliter et accélérer euh, 
l'accès à l'énergie et l'électrification euh, des pays dans lesquels nous intervenons. Euh, ça, c'est un des axes de notre intervention. L'autre axe, parce qu'on parle aujourd'hui d'énergie décentralisée, euh, c'est le off-grid. Donc, sur le off-grid, nous avons, euh, depuis une quinzaine d'années, accompagné une initiative appelée euh, Lighting Global, qui aide les, les pays en termes de cadrage. En, euh, quand je dis nous, hein, en termes de le groupe Banque mondiale a accompagné Lighting Global, donc pas que la SFI, c'est vraiment une approche groupe. Donc Lighting Global, hein, qui, qui accompagne les pays dans les défis d'électrification, donc accompagné signifiant concrètement en termes d'évolution réglementaire, mise en place de cadres réglementaires, mais également en termes de mobilisation de financement. Donc grâce à cette action-là, j'espère que je ne suis pas trop longue, tu me fais signe hein, si je suis trop longue. <rire> grâce à cette action-là, nous avons réussi à, à, à mobiliser euh, 2 milliards de dollars hein, donc à destination des projets d'électrification, permettant euh, l'accès à l'énergie d'environ de 500 millions de personnes. Les chiffres ont l'air importants, mais le défi est majeur. Il y a une statistique que je retiens à chaque fois et qui m'interpelle, que j'aimerais partager avec vous. Euh, la capacité installée en Afrique subsaharienne pour 600 millions de personnes est équivalente à la capacité installée en Espagne, un pays. 45, 50 millions de personnes. Donc c'est absolument phénoménal le gap qu'il faut combler. Donc il y a le on-grid, j'en ai parlé, c'est le scaling solar notamment, nous continuons à travailler avec d'autres initiatives en parallèle. Le off-grid, donc il y a Lighting Global, il y a également d'autres initiatives que nous déployons avec la, la Banque mondiale notamment. Euh, L'initiative euh, d'Ares qui a été lancée euh, lors de la COP27, donc d'Ares pour les initiés Distributed Access to Renewable Energy Scale Up. C'est une initiative en fait où l'objectif est d'accélérer, d'intensifier euh, les projets que nous avons en matière d'accès à l'énergie. Parce qu'on se rend compte que c'est absolument crucial de combler ce gap. C'est une nécessité euh, indispensable, on va en parler hein, pendant, pendant tout le panel, pour, les, pour euh, accompagner le développement économique tout simplement. Initiative majeure. Et dernière initiative que je souligne également, euh, le mini-grid, donc une approche euh, un peu plus structurée pour les projets mini-grid. Quand je dis structuré, c'est une approche euh, que nous conduisons avec euh, le groupe mondial euh, dans, dans son entièreté, c'est-à-dire avec la Banque mondiale et MIGA, euh, pour euh, lancer des projets. Donc MIGA va accompagner en termes de garantie les investisseurs. AFC va apporter les lignes de financement nécessaires et la Banque mondiale va apporter euh, les lignes de subvention qu'il faut. Euh, nous avons euh, lancé euh, cette initiative, le premier pays où nous l'avons lancé, c'est euh, en, en RDC, République démocratique du Congo. Et l'objectif, hein, c'est d'atteindre euh, euh, 180 euh, mégawatts de capacité installée et de pouvoir connecter en fait, des villes d'une de, 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 une, une taille relativement importante. La RDC est un gros pays. Euh, et l'objectif, c'est de connecter 4 millions de personnes. Je m'arrêterai là. Um, I'm going to switch back to English for the translators. Uh, my name is Thomas. I'm one of the founders of the Access to Energy Institute. But before that, I worked for a company that some of you will know or may know called Mobisol, one of the pioneers in solar home system in Tanzania, Kenya and Rwanda. And when this company was sold to NG, the management team of um, Mobisol said and said, what is this sector needing? Are we going to open another commercial company? And we said no, because if we only go commercial, we will not reach SDG 7. It's not true that SDG 7 will be reached and everybody's going to make money, and we will get there by 2030. I think that's one of the very obvious truths we spoke about this morning. We need X billion of dollars, but I think all of us in this room, and if anybody disagrees, please raise your hand, will say that the investment climate now is not the easiest. It's been easier before. And one of the things that the Access to Energy Institute is specifically doing is bringing data and data platforms, data software to the sector free of charge because we're non-for-profit in order for any stakeholder in the SDG 7 market or sector to be able to tell the story about what he or she does because one of my theses I'm bringing here to this panel is to scale investment, we need to put trust back into the relationship between the investor and the investee. Um, when you put money from an investor to an investee, the investor will look for impact. So there's kind of a information that will flow back from the investee to the investor, but 
do you believe that? And to give you one example, and I'm talking to actually Prospect, which is the data platform that we are presenting at this conference. We have a booth in the, in the conference tent. I spoke to an investor. He was invested, or he is invested in a company that does solar water pumps. And he says, the company has installed X hundred solar water pumps. And I tell him, but do you know where these solar water pumps are? He says, well, I'm told where they are, but I said, do you know these solar water pumps are running every day? And he said, well, I'm told they are working, but I don't know. So the investor is investing in a company which probably has installed those solar water pumps, but there's no digital platform in which the investor can look at on a daily basis in real time at whether the solar water pumps are doing what you are asking for, development. A solar water pump is only doing development if you can prove there's a yield increase of the farmer. So you need digital information. Another example, um, the World Bank is giving money to country X and gets reporting in Excel files or you know, long documents that say the money has had impact. But what if the World Bank, or any other funder for that matter, could look at a data platform, a visualization of on-grid, mini-grid, off-grid, productive use, clean cooking on a daily basis, and have the status of what's happening in country or region X. So if it works at the global level, you could be a rural electrification agency and say, I want to know what's happening in the provinces or the regions of my country. And if you are the company doing the job, do you have the software and the data platform to prove to whoever has money that what you're doing actually makes sense? And what Prospect is doing, it's basically it's an open source platform that anybody, I challenge you, and every single person in this room probably has some data that is full of information but that doesn't look good yet. And I would invite you to come to our booth in the conference tent to try whether what we have put at the disposition of the sector, which is a free of charge platform, will help you to mobilize more finance to actually do what we're talking about, which is scaling investment. And I'll leave it at that for the first intervention. <laughs> you need to speak to the microphone so we can join the conversation. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Yava. I'm the Policy and Partnerships Manager at CAMCO. CAMCO is a climate and impact fund manager. Um, we primarily focus on Sub-Saharan Africa and uh, the Pacific region and uh, have worked a lot in, in energy access and more broadly in renewable energy. Um, and since about 2015, we have been managing a financing facility called the Renewable Energy Performance Platform. It's a very long name, so we call it REP. Um, not to be mixed with REAP, which is another great uh, initiative. Um, so with REP, we have financed um, small-scale decentralized renewable energy projects and companies pretty much across the continent. I think we have made investments in some 19 countries, um, close to 50 um, investments. And a lot of them, also a large part of them in the off-grid space, particularly perhaps relevant for today is, is the mini-grid investments. We have been with REP, one of the pioneers in financing mini-grids and have financed to date probably some 12 companies. Um, and REP is number two, I think, by, according to the World Bank, in terms of the number of deals um, since 2010. So we're quite proud of that, and we've seen the sector grow. And so if we talk about um, you know, socioeconomic development, I think the most impressive and, and interesting impact for us comes through, through the off-grid projects, for sure. Um, and that can include anything from job creation. So with REP, um, we have already contributed to creating some 2,600 jobs, I believe. Um, still not uh, enough of them went to women, but we're working on that as well. Um, and then, of course, all the productive use activities that the mini-grid developers that we finance um, are doing in the field. I think I'll probably talk a little bit more of that uh, later. Generally, at CAMCO, we primarily focus on smaller scale, and for us, that also means that we are aiming to support more local developers. So that is both through REP, which has it as its mandate to focus on smaller scale projects, um, and also through Spark, which is another facility developed by CAMCO that finances commercial and industrial solar and energy efficiency in several um, African markets, where we work with local developers. So the impact there comes both by us helping those companies grow by offering the financing solution to them and their clients and also building their capacities along the way 
and also by enabling them to then support the CNI customers by offering them more reliable and uh, less costly um, electricity. So this is briefly uh, what we do, and I think one of the questions was the challenges probably, right? So just, I guess, I don't want to end on the challenges, but I know we'll have more time to discuss this, so I'll just say that I do think that, um, you know, I very much agree with the fact that we should focus, that energy should be seen as an enabler rather than the end goal, uh, even though it is very important as an end goal as well, but, but it's not enough or it can, it can do more. And to achieve that, I think today we just, we are working too much in silos, so I think we need to focus on breaking the silos, both in terms of um, at the policy level, at the financing level, at making companies work more closely together. And uh, yeah, we can expand on some of that later. Thank you very much, Eva. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Tijan Boy. I am the UNIDO uh, representative here in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, as you may know, the United, I would like first, sorry, to uh, thank uh, the uh, ARE for their invitation um, because actually ARE is a strategic partner to UNIDO. We have worked together for a long time. As you may know, uh, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization is this, uh, the specialized agency of the United Nations system uh, which specializes in uh, the um, inclusive and sustainable industrial development. That means that actually one of our four strategic pillars is totally dedicated to, uh, to sustainable energy and how we actually promote sustainable energy uh, in developing countries and countries in transition. Therefore, uh, our, our, our really our, our objective is to help uh, countries to decarbonize their industrial sector. We definitely work a lot with governments, especially on policy areas, regulatory frameworks and so on, but we mainly, we mainly try to focus on companies and the private sector. This is really why, what we, we, we would like to do. And this one of the things that we're doing is really try to see how we can actually enable uh, industrial companies, first of all, to change the way they think and use energy. That's one of the main areas. And this, in, in, this, in this framework, this is why we try to uh, ensure that industries actually have the opportunity, first of all, to meet industrial, international uh, energy standards, which is a very important thing, to reduce their operating costs when it comes to energy usage, and also to access finance. And also, of course, to provide them with the expertise, the technology, to, to move away gradually from uh, fossil uh, fuels. How do we do it? We provide, we actually have developed a certain number of services, of uh, priorities in this area. We focus a lot on training and, and tools uh, and providing them with training methodologies and, and capacity building. Uh, we work a lot, as I mentioned, on standards also as well. Uh, we develop also, we support in developing local markets in the uh, DRE uh, area. And of course, something that was mentioned by a lot of the, uh, my predecessors is building partnerships. As was very well said, it is, we feel that today it is important that we build partnerships and not work in silo, as was said before. And this is something we really insist on. And we really want to, to of course, uh, try to mobilize partnerships for uh, the private sector. And also, of course, awareness campaigns that we do. We go to companies, we, as I say, support them in sensitization in terms of how uh, energy uh, DRE solutions could be actually used for them and could be beneficial to renewable energy. So this is something we do a lot. And as a result, we have actually uh, developed in about 50 countries now, uh, implemented a lot of mini, uh, mini grid uh, initiatives. And, and, and of course, what, what uh, we also, as I mentioned also before, something that we do a lot, we have developed a lot of guidelines as well. And we worked with ARE on the, uh, on the mini grid, clean energy mini grid uh, guideline actually for the deployment. This is something that we feel is, is definitely very important. But something I think that is important to mention, and I think this was mentioned earlier this morning, is the fact that we, 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 uh, we have learned that actually through our projects that providing electricity access of case is, is really not, does not automatically translate into economic development. 
we have to uh, go, it has to go, go in hand with the stimulation of demand. And in that sense, we mean, we, we, we work a lot on the development of uh, agricultural value chains, skills development, uh, entrepreneurship, and other issues. So we feel that for a mini grid or DRE solutions to be really viable, we need to anchor customers. We need to have anchor customers, customers that are actually willing, that have a revenue and that are willing to, uh, to uh, pay for this uh, electricity. That means that behind there's a whole economic uh, or industrialization uh, ecosystem that needs to be put in place. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Is that uh, my turn? Yes. I think I will uh, switch back to French. Well, for you not to be alone, donc je vais plutôt parler en français, parce que c'est ma langue naturelle. Donc je suis de la société Orange, qui est une entreprise euh, ivoirienne, mais pas seulement, c'est aussi une entreprise euh, sénégalaise, euh, malienne, enfin, elle est présente dans 18 pays en Afrique. Et vous allez vous demander, mais que fait Orange dans, dans, dans ce panel où on parle normalement d'énergie et non pas de télécommunications Donc tout d'abord, les télécommunications, c'est de l'énergie transformée en, euh, en ondes, en fréquence, pour que chacun de nous puisse communiquer à distance. Sans énergie, il n'y a pas de télécommunications. Et dans les pays où nous opérons, mais dans à peu près, je dirais, la moitié de, de, de nos sites, mais on n'a pas l'énergie centralisée. On n'a pas le grid. Donc il nous, il nous a fallu très tôt développer la capacité d'avoir de l'énergie décentralisée. Donc c'est ce qu'on a fait euh, ces dernières années. Aujourd'hui, on a plus de 5000 tours télécoms qui sont connectés à des systèmes de production d'électricité solaire autonome, qui sont donc des, 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 pico, euh, des picosystèmes. C'est ce qui nous a emmené à mettre le doigt dans ce vaste problème d'énergie. Parce qu'une fois qu'on a, eu, euh, qu a eu fini de développer ces systèmes pour nos propres tours, derrière, la première question que l'on se pose, oh, donc je refais un petit... Petit euh, rappel, donc une des priorités d'Orange, c'est d'être vraiment au service de ce qui est essentiel pour nos populations. Et, et l'énergie est un élément extrêmement essentiel pour chacun d'entre nous. Donc une fois qu'on s'est équipé, nous, on se dit, mais autour de nous, on a des gens qui finalement ont aussi besoin d'électricité. D'ailleurs, on voyait euh, très régulièrement quelques villageois venir donner un petit billet aux gardiens de la tour pour pouvoir brancher leur téléphone aux panneaux solaires qu'on avait installés, ce qui pouvait mettre en péril l'équilibre même du système global parce qu'il avait été dimensionné, pas pour ça. Donc plutôt que de dire euh, qu'on ne va qu'on va empêcher ces pratiques, on se dit mais pourquoi ne pas étendre finalement le système de production pour pouvoir le donner à d'autres. Et c'est là où on a appris qu'il existait des concepts que, que vous connaissez certainement qui sont des concepts... Euh, ABC, donc euh, Ancre Business Community, qui permettent de faire en sorte que quand lorsque Minigrid est construit, s'il y a un client Ancre qui peut être donc Orange avec sa tour télécom, qui est prêt à payer euh, pour une bonne partie de la production, 20-30%, et derrière ça permet peut-être de reconnecter quelques business qui vont travailler dans la journée, et puis après finalement pouvoir, entre guillemets, subventionner, mais de façon, euh, de façon comment dire, intrinsèque, de l'énergie qu'on pourra fournir aux communautés derrière. Donc, c'est l'un des éléments que l'on a, qui nous a emmené au départ. Et puis, on s'est rendu compte très vite, mais que pour pouvoir, une fois qu'on avait construit ce mini grid, il fallait ensuite que tout cela soit entre guillemets smart. Ça veut dire qu'on ne pouvait pas, dans ce mini grid qui a été construit, mettre des compteurs mécanique avec, la, avec une relève manuelle, euh, ainsi de suite. Donc il fallait construire tout un, éco, tout un système technologique smart, donc de smart metering, où on pouvait euh, pouvoir savoir qui consomme quoi à n'importe quel moment, à partir de n'importe où dans le monde. Et pour ça, on a besoin aussi de télécommunications, finalement, 
pouvoir transporter ces données. Orange peut permettre de garantir que les données seront vraiment complètes et transportées à l'endroit où il faut. Euh, voilà. Et on s'est aussi rendu compte qu'il fallait peut-être assurer le, le paiement des consommations en upfront. Donc, introduire un système de prépaiement, un peu comme ce que nous, on fait dans les télécommunications. Dire, ben, finalement, euh, si ce système est suffisamment smart, on peut faire en sorte que toutes les consommations soient payées. Parce que ça, c'est essentiel. Parce que s'il n'y a pas de revenus, il n'y a pas d'investissement possible. S'il n'y a pas d'investissement, ben, le peu de ressources d'électricité et d'électricité qui sont là, finalement, sont chères. Et donc, finalement, les gens ne peuvent pas se les payer. Et donc, on n'a pas de revenus, on est dans un cercle vicieux. Euh, voilà, donc de proche en proche, on a développé donc, tout un écosystème qui permet de faire, de faire cela, et même au-delà. Parce que finalement, lorsqu'on fait un mini-grid, on atteint des personnes euh, sur euh, un rayon, allez, on va dire, quoi, de 5 km, mais que fait-on des personnes qui sont plus loin On peut leur donner un système autonome, euh, indépendant, un solar home system, pour lequel il faut aussi pouvoir gérer de façon, entre guillemets, smart, c'est-à-dire pouvoir lui donner ce système non pas en paiement cash, parce que ce serait trop cher, mais en paiement progressif. Et derrière, il faut pouvoir assurer que ce système sera contrôlable à distance, que les paiements pourront passer de façon autonome en utilisant le mobile money. Euh, voilà. Et puis une fois qu'on a développé ces systèmes smart-là, pourquoi ne pas finalement les déployer dans tout le pays, y compris sur le grid Ça permettra aux gens aussi, en plus de pouvoir payer, mais aussi de pouvoir savoir qu'est-ce qu'ils consomment, de façon peut-être à consommer un peu moins, de consommer plus intelligemment, et ça fera du bien à la planète. Donc voilà en quelques mots pourquoi Orange, et on a mis le doigt là-dedans, et on se rend compte que c'est énorme ce qu'il y a à faire encore derrière, et on ne pourra jamais le faire tout seul, mais on est à la disposition vraiment de tous les énergéticiens pour pouvoir aller plus loin. Merci beaucoup. Et c'est pour ça qu'on est tous ensemble pour essayer de collaborer et trouver des solutions. Um, uh, so, yeah, I will switch back to English. What I propose, because we really need to end by one sharp. So, uh, I propose to have 20 minutes now, meaning four minutes maximum per person, with some specific targeted questions for every one of you. And then we will have 15 minutes for question and answer. So, please, for the audience, you can start thinking about questions. But by questions, I mean question. No advertising of products, etc. <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, so for the questions, also I encourage all the panelists to jump on other people. If you have some answers or reactions, don't hesitate to just jump. Um, so the first question is going to be for Yeva. Um, so it's about what are some key elements from the REPP portfolio on renewables for transformational change? And also, how can this example serve to inspire others and trigger catalytic development? That Easy question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure You're I welcome. can answer that in uh, four minutes. Um, I think transformational change is a, is a concept that kind of maybe comes from impact uh, jargon. Um, for us, I mean, we look at it uh, in, through several dimensions. One of it is, is trying to invest in companies that we see as kind of first movers. Um, so first-of-a-kind projects, first-of-a-kind business models. REP is not a VC type of funding, so we, we don't come in at that sort of super early stage, but we still want to support the growth of these companies. And, uh, and then we also apply some innovative financing instruments that are required for this to, to scale and work a little bit, hopefully, to also um, develop the enabling environment in the markets where we work. Um, so, with, th with that, maybe to highlight a few examples, there are definitely too many in the portfolio that we're very proud of the, in terms of the work that the mini-grid developers are doing, particularly through supporting economic activity, productive use, supporting socio social infrastructure such as uh, health facilities, um, educational facilities, whether it's Energy City in Sierra Leone or One Power in Lesotho and many others. Um, but in terms of maybe highlighting one um, example where I think all of these different themes come together in terms of industrialization, socioeconomic development, etc., it's uh, one investment that we made to, actually it was a wind project, a tiny, um, I think 2.2 megawatts wind project in Tanzania, developed by Rift Valley Energy. Um, but the project, which we call Muenga, was actually the wind farm was a tiny um, part of that project. So what uh, Rift Valley is doing there is they, they already had um, a, 
hydro project in, in the site, as well as a rural electrification network. And this is also an interesting example where they're working with the government in a way, so it's, it's not an isolated grid, it's in fact interconnected into Tanesco's um, network. And they're providing um, electricity to, I think, two farms, two tea farms, sorry, two industrial parks, hundreds of productive users. They themselves then, of course, also worked on actually helping these, well, helping these users, whether it's productive users or um, commercial, to get access to the required um, for, to the required uh, technology. So they also provided some some loans, or they helped to um, finance the equipment and then lease it out in, in terms of you know kind of industrial parks. So there was a lot of work that has gone into that, and I think it really ties together if we want to highlight the impact that we can have and through a relatively. I would say very innovative in a way uh, business model. Maybe we talk, you know, we tend to silo also the, the off-grid and the, and the grid connected um, business models, but actually here you can see how they can work together and, and reinforce each other. Of course, it's not possible everywhere, but, uh, but where it is possible, it can be quite interesting. And yeah, to, to throw in some more terms, they use the ABC model um, and uh, yeah, maybe I'll stop at the jargon here. It was perfect, Eva. We even have one more minute, so <laughs> but uh, please, no one use it. Um, so the next question is for uh, Monsieur Orange or Nazi. Um, your question is: As a company working both in energy space and uh, in the larger telephone corporate, how do you see the interlinkage uh, between these two industries? Donc je vais le faire en français encore. Ouais, bien sûr. Donc, de, je pense que tout à l'heure j'ai j'ai montré que nous sommes dans le domaine des télécommunications et non pas dans le domaine de l'énergie. Donc Orange n'est pas un producteur d'énergie, mais permet aux producteurs d'énergie de le faire. On parle souvent du concept d'énergéticien 4.0, qui est un énergéticien qui utilise le smart, euh, les smart devices, des devices connectés, pour pouvoir de façon plus efficiente délivrer son, son énergie. Juste pour poursuivre sur la question que vous aviez posée sur les, les SDG 7, enfin les, les objectifs pour le développement, est-ce que finalement fournir un kit solaire à une personne qui va regarder la télé, euh, c'est contribuer au développement Donc je vais faire une, une dissertation classique en disant pour, en, en disant contre, en effet. Parce qu'en effet, on peut dire, mais non, pas du tout, regarder Netflix, c'est pas ça qui va permettre de se développer, mais encore. Aujourd'hui, on a quand même interrogé nos pour savoir qu'est-ce qui est plus important pour eux. Et vous savez, la chose qui est la plus importante, euh, l'élément technologique qui est vraiment important pour les personnes rurales, vous ne devinerez jamais, c'est la radio. Pourquoi Parce que la radio permet d'accéder à l'information. Et finalement, est-ce que avoir plus d'éducation n'est pas un objectif de développement euh, Je ne dirais pas ça. Et donc, qui plus est si, cette, si ces informations peuvent arriver avec aussi de la, de la, de la télévision, euh, voilà, après, on peut sélectionner ce que l'on veut. Hein. C'est un média sur lequel on peut regarder ce que l'on veut. Mais il y a des, des contenus qui mériteraient peut-être d'être un peu plus développés euh, pour euh, avoir des contenus plus locaux qui peuvent effectivement contribuer à une certaine éducation, à l'accès à certaines informations. Euh, voilà. Mais néanmoins, une fois qu'on est éduqué, il faut quand même pouvoir gagner de l'argent aussi. Donc c'est pour ça que c'est très très important de pouvoir introduire des équipements qui permettent aux gens de transformer ce qu'ils ont comme production en farine ou de conserver le poisson qu'ils ont, euh, qu ont pêché au lieu de le brader euh, ou bien les, les fruits, et ainsi de suite. Donc c'est certain que avec donc, euh, Thomas ou d'autres personnes, euh, je crois qu'il a d'autres casquettes, mais ils fabriquent des équipements qui peuvent permettre de, de fournir de l'énergie à des systèmes plus gros et qui ainsi peuvent permettre aux gens d'utiliser de, de, l'énergie pour se, pour se développer. Je crois que c'est essentiel. Et tout cela devrait être piloté à distance, en smart, et on aura besoin de quelqu'un comme Orange pour cela. Merci beaucoup. Il bah, y a Thomas euh, qui va reprendre le relais. Uh, so Thomas... Uh, based on your experience, what role can data play in scaling investment uh, for the distributed renewable economies for socioeconomic development? 
I'm not going to answer this question. No kidding. <laughs> you can. Uh, yeah, no, please. I wanna, uh, because, uh, yeah, no, but I think that's why. I, I, uh, yeah, just um, do it. We, we had the joke before that she could ask questions, but we could refuse to answer. Um, so, Natsi just mentioned another um, function of the Access to Energy Institute. We don't also do, we do open source software, but we also do open source hardware. So, we built, we call it a solar generator. It's a large standalone system, so it's not a solar home system, it's a solar business system, so which can do productive use appliances. But coming back to Prospect, which is a joint initiative, it's not only A2EI, it's Get Invest and A2EI, and to make it very practical. Every investment, every funding has a moment where you sign a contract between the person giving you the money and yourself. And then the guy says, or the girl says, I give you money and you will do this. And at the end of that contract, you have a paragraph saying monitoring, reporting, and evaluation. But it's very at the back of the, of the contract. And then something is written, typically not digital. And as an investor, you need to kind of believe that it's all true. Because if not, your in investment is not impactful. And as an investee, you hope that they're going to believe you. So my invitation would be, put this, what do you expect as an investor? And what can you do as an investee? Put it at the top of the contract. Agree specifically on variables, on data points that you will think are truthful. If the investee gives you access to that data, and Prospect can be the platform free of charge that you can use to do that, maybe the disappointment between investee and investor will be lower because you have a transparent way of doing stuff. The other advantage is how much of $100 of funding arrives at the bottom in the field? Probably not 100. The tr t just one example, result-based finance, one of the typical instruments to transfer money. If you speak to people behind closed doors, whether they're funders or whether they're recipients, it's not ideal because it's full of transaction costs. I know companies, they don't even apply to result-based finance schemes because it's too much transaction cost to fill in the paperwork. And funders, because they don't trust they're gonna get the result, they are putting like, you know, 800 pages implementation plan. So a digital platform by definition is low cost because, you know, there's no much cost associated to putting data in it. So not only is it much more precise, because you can look at it on a daily basis, it's basically real-time information, but it's also low cost. So it's really an invitation to say, agree on what you believe is the information that you can give as the person or the company doing the job on the ground. Agree as investor or funder, this is what I need to get. Because if you have a match there, then more funding comes into the sector and that's what you're talking about, which is basically scaling investment. Thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, yes, you can give it to Fatumata. So your turn. <laughs> what similarities does IFC see between the distributed renewable energy um, and other infrastructure sectors? Um, also, what lessons learned from other sectors do you take on board when you design future initiatives for the distributed renewable energy spaces? So what is the mix between them? Uh, très bien. Je, donc je, je réponds en français. Um, Il est, il est évident qu'il faut approcher le sujet de façon relativement innovante et ne pas forcément trop dupliquer les modèles existants en pensant que ça va marcher forcément. Donc think outside the box, parce que voilà, le, la bancabilité des projets est, est très challenging. Donc il faut arriver à un business model équilibré pour attirer un secteur privé. Donc il faut, il faut se, se tourner les ménages. Il faut aussi quelque part... Euh, sans forcément dupliquer mais euh, utiliser ce qu'on considère comme étant quelques similarités malgré tout euh, Minigrid en parle d'actifs c'est des infrastructures c'est des infrastructures qui s'amortissent sur du long terme euh, quand on veut attirer un investisseur pour financer un, une infrastructure qui s'amortit sur du long terme il faut lui donner de la visibilité et lui donner de la visibilité donc je, je prends l'exemple le, ce que j'avais mentionné tout à l'heure de Scaling Mini Grid. Euh, donc ce projet-là, typiquement, on s'est aussi inspiré de projets classiques, Project Finance, euh, parce que l'actif à amortir est long. Euh, dans ce type d'actif à amortir, si on prend un exemple sur la Côte d'Ivoire, hein, par exemple le pont HKB, qu'on prend tous régulièrement, euh, une partie des revenus euh, de ce projet-là sont contractés. Donc il y a une prévisibilité 
des revenus sur du long terme. Donc ça, c'est un facteur qui rassure un investisseur et qui est attractif pour un investisseur. Il y a aussi euh, le, le caractère de, 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 de confort que la garantie peut apporter. J'ai parlé de MIGA tout à l'heure, qui est une autre structure de groupe Banque mondiale, qui peut garantir euh, l'investissement de l'acteur privé. Donc comment faire en sorte, hein, dans ces projets qui, qui, sont, euh, qui ont des challenges, d'attirer un secteur privé, de le rassurer. Donc ça, 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 ça fait partie des moyens. D'autres moyens, évidemment, dans la structure de ces projets, on parle de, de biens et services essentiels hein, qui sont confiés à un secteur privé. Donc il y a un réel défi de bancabilité. Euh, il y a une nécessité, souvent, de, de subvention. Donc quelle structure de subvention mettre en place hein, Est-ce que c'est ce qu'on appelle du viability gap funding, donc de la subvention upfront c'est des schémas aussi qu'on est en train d'envisager et qu'on regarde dans le cadre du euh, scaling mini -grid. Donc quelques exemples, évidemment, think outside the box, mais en prenant peut-être aussi euh, des similitudes par rapport à cet actif long, cette nécessité d'amortissement sur une période long terme, et adapter en termes de, de, de structure de financement pour arriver à un projet qui soit bancable et qui soit attractif pour un secteur privé. Je m'arrête là. Merci beaucoup. Euh, déjà, félicitations à tous. On est arrivé sur des bons termes à la séance de question and answer. On a 20 minutes, donc c'est bien large. Euh, donc déjà, de 1... Euh... Ah, j'ai oublié. Ah, Excusez-moi, c'est pas gentil. <laughs> I will not do it again. Thank you, Batumata. Sorry, I was so... Um, so yes, of course, I have a question for you. You will not escape. <laughs> uh, my question is, as the UN Agency for Industrial Development, What is your vision for the DR in the broader industrial development agenda? And especially, how, how can you need those expertise and links to other industries be leveraged to the benefit of the DR sector? Thank you. I'll try to be very, very no worry. short. Don't <laughs> worry. I, I still have five minutes buffer, so everything's great. <laughs> no, thank you. Th thank you for the question, actually, because, uh, well, well, what I'll try to do maybe to answer this question is to uh, also illustrate the three ways that we would like to intervene in terms of specifically developing this uh, DRE solutions and by using examples of uh, projects and programs that we're developing specifically here in Côte d'Ivoire. The first, uh, let's say, area is of course how can we uh, develop DRE for small-scale industries. This is something I think uh, we don't need to, uh, I guess uh, because of time, we don't need to go into the logic of this, but I think we all understand that developing uh, the RE solutions for especially rural development is, is, is crucial. In this, in this case, we are, we are here in Côte d'Ivoire, we are supporting the, the use of uh, renewable energies to develop uh, in, the, in, the, in certain value chains. And especially here, we're working in the cassava value chain, as you know from people who work, who live here, who, who know Côte d'Ivoire very well. Achike, for instance, is a very staple uh, food here uh, used in the country. So through this actually renewable energy project, what we've tried to do is try to see how we can structure, uh, let's say en amont, if you say in French, we can structure actually support in structuring a value chain. That means the cassava value chain which is also uh, a, a value change where a lot of women are, are working in. And actually because of the way, the traditional way of producing uh, this was actually very dangerous to their health because of the, you know, the, uh, the um, how do you say, le 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 waste that was uh, spoiled. So, 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 so here what we're trying to do basically is try to see how through specifically biomass, biogas, we can actually support the development and the implementation of these types of solutions and also support the structuring of this agro-industrial agri, uh, agri value chain. So we support them in, in terms of organizing, structuring the, uh, female, uh, the uh, women's cooperatives, the transformation process, the access to market. So all of this combines into what we were saying earlier in terms of structuring, really uh, building an ecosystem that could actually be one that could be, uh, how do you say, that could actually support the diffusion of uh, renewable energy solutions and decentralize. The second, the second area is the work that we are now doing with the uh, business association here. And here we're dealing with more, with bigger companies. But what we're trying to do with these bigger companies through specially uh, sensitization, 
uh, awareness uh, campaigns is basically to, to, to see how they can transition. We can, we can support them in facilitating their transition to actually renewable energy solutions. And, but what we do, we have here, we have developed a very systematic approach whereby we first start by, of course, like I said, doing the sensitization awareness campaigns through uh, the business associations and, and so on. Then we, of course, support them in terms of energy efficient solutions in order also to, to be able uh, to support them in, in um, how do you say, in better utilizing their energy or res or that, they, that they're using already. And then we go to, of course, the third step, which is actually trying to sensitize them and, and, and support them in transitioning to renewable energy solutions. And this is something that we are we're working on here in, in Côte d'Ivoire. And it, is, uh, it, is, it has actually, uh, how do you say, uh, created a, a, a great momentum. And we're also developing, as was mentioned by my, my neighbor here, the uh, uh, industrial platforms. Uh, as well, in terms of how we can support the use of renewable uh, energy solutions in industrial uh, parks, and here we, in Cote d'Ivoire, we have quite a big. Uh, they have quite a big program in terms of industrial park development, and we're supporting the government and the private sector to see how they can use these uh, decentralized renewable energy solutions. The third area, uh, and I think maybe it might be the most challenging one but also we think the most promising one uh, also, uh, it's how we can support uh, countries to develop their own uh, renewable energy equipment industries. That means because a lot, most of the, uh, as you know, most of the uh, equipment is still imported here uh, in countries like Cote d'Ivoire and uh, other African countries. So basically what we're trying to do here is try to see how we can support the countries. First of all, that means, of course, that we need to have a con conducive environment. Uh, con uh, countries have to have and design specific strategies, of course, to do that. We need to develop skills. We need to develop standards. But all of this, I think, is necessary in the long run. It is, I think, important for African countries to develop their own productive capacities also in terms of producing their renewable energy uh, equipments. Here we are, we are trying to see how we have um, uh, an electric mobility uh, project through the use of renewable energy. And in, this, in the context of this project, we're trying to see, we're, we're going to do a few studies, conduct a few studies to see how precisely with it, we, we can actually uh, identify what would be necessary to support the building and this, the structuring of this type of, uh, of industries. And just to finish, I would like to maybe have uh, an clando, if we can, if can use this word in French, to, to Thomas, because we definitely think that innovation uh, in, in rural uh, um, efficiency, um, rural energ energies, is something that we should focus on as well. Uh, I think you provided with the platform something which is quite interesting. I think the partnership that we can try to, to create, I think, will support this, uh, this, uh, the, the necessary uh, introduction of innovation. And we're going to work on Industry 4.0 applied specifically to the energy uh, sector. So this is just what I wanted to say. Thank you. I, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, so, yes, uh, now, yes, we are going to move to question and answers. Uh, we have like uh, 15 minutes and people need to, our panelists need to have the time to answer. So, please, please, please keep it as brief as possible. And I think, yeah, someone is going to pass by with the microphone. It's, uh, Monsieur, it's lui. Donc, euh, merci beaucoup. Je suis Konima Dambele. Je viens du Mali et je dirige une entreprise qui intervient dans le domaine de l'énergie solaire et notamment les solutions productives. Alors, euh, la question que je voudrais, elle est adressée à Fatmata Sissoko. Mais avant, je vais répondre à, à votre question qui va me conduire à la question que je vais poser. À savoir, euh, distribuer un kit qui permet de regarder la télé, est-ce que c'est développé j'ai dit le foot. <rire> ah, le foot, voilà. voilà. Je pense que la réponse à cette question dépend d'où on se situe euh, dans, sur le diagramme de Maslow. Lorsqu'on a le choix entre chercher à manger et regarder le foot, 
il est bien évident que ce kit-là n'est pas votre solution. Alors, c'est pourquoi euh, le projet, le programme Lighting Global, qui est basé sur la fourniture des, des kits de enfin, pour l'éclairage, euh, que la Banque mondiale est en train de faire dans différents pays, et on paye des primes aux entreprises qui arrivent à vendre ces kits auprès des gens les plus pauvres. Et ce programme n'avance pas bien pour cette raison. C'est pour ça que nous, nous avons expérimenté euh, un projet qui consiste à apporter des pompes d'irrigation solaire aux gens pauvres qui leur permettent d'avoir de l'argent et cette fois-ci qu'ils investissent dans des kits pour la télé. Je pense que la Banque mondiale a inversé les choses. C'est pour ça que ce projet ne doit pas donner l'impact voulu. Est-ce que le même système, les primes que vous payez pour la distribution de ces kits d'éclairage, est-ce que vous pouvez faire la même chose pour des solutions qui permettent aux gens d'avoir de l'argent et de ne pas avoir besoin de beaucoup de campagnes pour acheter les kits Merci. Merci beaucoup. On va prendre encore deux ou trois. Well, let's take some questions and then uh, we can uh, answer all of them. All right. so, good afternoon. Il y a pas mal de gens avec la main. Oui, bonjour. Voilà, je suis euh, Monsieur Gérard Nchabia. Je suis le président de l'association camerounaise pour les énergies renouvelables, vice-président du comité technique CT19 des énergies nouvelles et renouvelables de la Nord, directeur de publication du magazine Panafricain Planète Vert Info. Voilà. Ma question s'adresse à Madame Fatoumata Sissoko aussi et à Madame Yeva. Et ensuite, et ensuite à, à Monsieur euh, Tidjan. Non, pas M. Tidjan, M. Natsi Misamo. Voilà. La première question à Mme Fatima, Fatoumata, elle est celle-ci. Vous avez indiqué dans votre exposé, c'est un pays pour, sur lequel, pour lequel vous travaillez, c'est-à-dire en Afrique. Alors, euh, parmi ces pays, le constat fort que j'ai pu relever, c'est qu'il n'y a aucun pays de l'Afrique centrale, à moins que j'ai mal compris. Est-ce que votre programme d'accès à l'énergie ne regarde que l'Afrique de l'Ouest en dehors de l'Afrique centrale, en l'occurrence le Cameroun Ça, c'est la première question. La deuxième question s'adresse à Mme Yeva, que d'ailleurs je salue. Mme Yeva et Assé et Kamko ont initié, n'est-ce pas, des, je vais dire des initiatives de financement des développeurs de projets au Cameroun. Et ceci étant, je voulais demander à Mme Yeva de nous expliquer foncièrement le dispositif de financement REPP. C'est-à-dire la plateforme énergétique pour des énergies volables. Voilà. La troisième question s'adresse à M. Misamou. Euh, le... Non, pas M. Monsieur, Monsieur, Monsieur Tidjan et Edouard euh, de la Côte d'Ivoire, qui indiquait, hein, je salue, c'est une observation qui parlait, n'est-ce pas, du renforcement de capacité dans le domaine et aussi de la question des normes. C'est très important et j'ai apprécié parce que nous ne pouvons pas parler d'investissement dans un domaine, dans le domaine de la salle d'énergie, sans toutefois mettre en avant, en amont, la, le, la question du renforcement de capacité et la question de la norme. C'est très important parce que si financer des projets d'accès à l'énergie, il, il faudra prendre en considération aussi de la technologie, à savoir la qualité de la technologie. C'est très important. Donc j'apprécie, je voudrais que vous m'en vous dites encore plus profondément, comment est-ce que vous mettez en place, vous financez, n'est-ce pas, euh, les normes, comment est-ce que vous regardez le renforcement de la capacité. Voilà, j'en ai terminé. Merci beaucoup. On va prendre une dernière question. Par contre, je voudrais bien que ce soit une femme, pour que ce ne soit que des hommes qui monopolisent l'espace. Donc je vois en face de moi une femme qui lève la main, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Iman, Iman Benamar. I represent uh, Turbulent in Eastern and uh, Southern Africa. I have a question for um, Yeva. Um, one of the things you said is with REP, you invest in, in small-scale projects or small-scale companies. However, um, the example you gave from Tanzania was 2.2 uh, megawatts. Um, with our company, we're definitely in, in smaller-scale sm projects. So um, my question is rather, especially if you depart from really the rural and the community needs, we aren't necessarily talking multiple megawatts. So how do you, as REP, meet the even smaller scale projects and how do you make them um, feasible? Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Um, I think, Ines, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we can take one more question and just 10 over 10. All right, my name is Olusegun Oye. Good afternoon. Uh, we just... Uh, can I go ahead? My name is Olusegun Oye. Thank you very much. Uh, my company is Basecom Nigeria Limited. I just want to quickly direct this question to Madam Eva. Um, do you have financing for small factories in rural communities uh, because my company actually has a partnership with one. So, and if you do, um, how can one qualify for such financing? Um, then the second question I have is for Mr. Thomas. Um, your platform, please, could you share? How do we get to your platform? And then how do you manage data security and data privacy on those on the open source platform. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, but we really cannot take many more questions, although I will encourage not only in this panel, but in all the panels to make sure when we take questions to include women, uh, because otherwise it's always the same. Uh, so now I leave the room to all our panelists. Uh, please choose the order. I don't know. There were questions for all of us. Instead of doing this way, maybe we do the other way around. So it's a uh, um, so let's try to take like two, three minutes for answering and maybe some final statement. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. I think I actually only have one question to ask, major question for a colleague from uh, Cameroon. So je vais répondre en français comme la, la, la question a été posée en français et je serai très court. En tout cas, je, je pense que c'était votre intervention était plutôt un commentaire. Donc euh, je vous remercie d'ailleurs pour ce commentaire. Euh, en ce qui concerne de manière concrète ce qu'on fait, ce que nous, 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 déjà comme je l'avais dit au début, on produit des guides et, et, et donc euh, des guides méthodologiques, euh, notamment sur les normes et euh, nous fournissons aussi des services d'appui de, euh, au renforcement des capacités auprès donc, de certaines entreprises. Donc je, peux, je pourrais, si je prends vos, vos, vos contacts, déjà peut-être vous envoyer ces guides-là euh, dont je parle et aussi euh, pourrait vous mettre en rapport avec nos, nos responsables qui travaillent sur le Cameroun pour voir effectivement comment on pourrait, euh, pour le Cameroun pourrait bénéficier de, de ce type de programme. Merci. Merci. Ouais. C'est comme vous voulez. <rire> Um, okay, so I think I'll, I'll combine the two questions. So one, if I understood correctly, and uh, hi Gérard, I'm sorry I didn't recognize you before, um, it was about the mandate of RAP, right? Um, so, and that relates to the second question as well. So with RAP, as it was designed back in 2015 or so, small scale is being defined as up to, in terms of capacity, of up to 25 megawatts. Now, I don't even know if we have officially a sort of, you know, the minimum. Um, I think we would normally say it's around one megawatt. Um, but so how does that translate? And then REP can finance off-grid and on-grid. So it, it has, we've made investments in a few SHS companies, mostly in West Africa. A lot of mini-grids, as I mentioned, isolated grids. We've just announced an investment in Nuru in DRC. Um, and some small, what we consider to be small IPPs, or what I think generally, if you compare to IFC, you know, we are talking about very different scales. So 1.5 is considered very small, or 2.2 that I mentioned in Tanzania. Um, when it comes to, I don't know your business model, I'm very happy to chat uh, later on. Um, but, you know, if we talk about mini grids, maybe we can also mention the ticket size. So with REP1, and by the way, we're now nearly fully committed, we are actually fundraising for REP2, so a scale-up of the facility, which will hopefully maintain largely a very similar mandate. Um, the smallest ticket size with REP1 was about 300,000, I think, British pounds. Um, and we're saying that, you know, this, the, the soft spot would maybe be around 1 million, but we could actually go below that. So, again, that kind of indicates, the, I guess, the size for you, and there is some flexibility there, maybe. Um, and in terms of how we can fund smaller projects, I mean, you know, with mini grids, so yes, we wouldn't be the type of funder who now funds, let's say, one sort of one-off pilot sites that's not within the current sort of mandate. But so what we are looking at is, I guess, aggregation would be kind of the word or looking at, you know, kind of portfolios of projects, which would become, you know, once you, once you work on trying to fundraise or trying to find the required financing for a portfolio of projects, 
that kind of starts making you know financial sense in terms of also how much you need to invest in the you know the whole investment process which as thomas alluded you know some aspects are actually costly so so that just sort of from that perspective um, for a fund manager any funder i guess yeah it's unless it's more kind of maybe concessional funding that comes in early on but i'm probably mixing up several different topics here thank you so much eva um, I only had a, s a small question. So come and see us at the booth, um, which is in the conference tent, to understand how Prospect can work for you regarding data privacy and security. It's very important to understand you own the data. So the person, the organization giving us the data, it's not owned by Prospect. You own the data and you decide who can see the data. That's super important because, you know, if it were available, to it's very sensitive data. So that's absolutely taken care of. And as to the closing words, if you have the sense that, you know, data can actually increase trust while lowering cost, come and see us at the booth to understand how we can help you. And if you don't think that's the case, come and see us and I will convince you it's the case. Thank you. In a nutshell, please go to the booth. <laughs> Alors, pour ma part, je, je, je reprends trois questions. Hein. D'abord, la, la première question de mon frère, Monsieur Dambélé, du Mali, euh, par rapport à Global Lighting. Et si j'ai bien compris, hein, ce que je comprends, c'est que vous dites que le programme, en fait, il apporte de la subvention, donc des primes aux entreprises qui vendent des kits. Et ce que vous proposez, c'est pourquoi ne pas mieux équiper les agriculteurs pour qu'ils puissent acheter des kits, notamment d'autres structures. C'est bien ça, hein. En fait, je pense que la question, c'est qu'est-ce qu'on stimule Est-ce qu'on stimule l'offre ou la demande Je pense qu'il y a plusieurs schémas en fonction des pays qui sont déployés. On peut même faire les deux en réalité. Le schéma de l'offre avec une prime aux entreprises, ce qui est intéressant, c'est que dans ce schéma-là, euh, il y a tout un travail amont qui est fait par rapport à la caractéristique technique du kit qui est cédé, par rapport à la qualité de ce kit-là, euh, la durabilité du kit... Euh, Parfois, euh, dans certains pays, même des, des accords qui sont, euh, qui sont obtenus euh, avec les autorités du pays pour donner des incentives pour pouvoir importer ces kits. Donc, ce n'est pas juste une prime qui est octroyée à, à l'opérateur ou au vendeur privé. Il y a tout un travail amont qui permet d'avoir euh, du confort, en tout cas que l'agriculteur qui achète ce, ce kit ait du confort, hein, ou, ou cet équipement de pompe solaire ait du confort pour pouvoir... Euh, se baser dessus et, et, et que ça ne, ça ne s'abîme pas à, à, au bout de X mois d'utilisation. Euh, voilà. Donc de l'autre côté, ce qu'on peut aussi faire hein, en stimulant la demande, c'est ce que j'ai vu aussi dans les programmes, c'est euh, permettre euh, l'accès à des, euh, des prêts auprès des institutions de microfinance à des taux bonifiés pour que les agriculteurs puissent, grâce à ces prêts-là, pouvoir acheter des équipements. Donc, pareil, de la même manière, il y a quand même une traçabilité et un, un, point, de vigilance, un point de vigilance pardon, fort sur la, la qualité de, de, de l'outil. Donc, plusieurs schémas, c'est un programme qui dure depuis une quinzaine d'années, hein, donc plusieurs schémas sont déployés en fonction des pays, donc l'offre, la demande, ou alors les deux en même temps. Mais bon, on pourra, on pourra échanger plus dessus pour votre projet spécifique, ce que vous vous vendez, et comment on peut l'envisager. Le, la deuxième question sur le Cameroun. Euh, évidemment, on couvre évidemment l'Afrique centrale et le Cameroun en particulier. On, on a des projets, on a financé des projets d'Ibamba euh, et Kribi euh, au Cameroun. Donc on, on est évidemment très euh, euh, focus sur le Cameroun. Moi-même, j'y étais la, le mois dernier. J'ai une équipe qui va à la fin du mois. C'est évidemment un pays extrêmement important pour nous. Ceci étant, euh, donc ça c'est le on-grid, hein, les deux exemples que j'ai donnés. On travaille aussi euh, sur les projets euh, euh, de CNI, Commercial and Industrial. Euh, on, on, on travaille avec des, des fonds d'investissement ou des acteurs hein, qui vont apporter des financements euh, CNI à des, euh, à, des, euh, à des cimenteries, à des aciéries, à des, à, pour favoriser l'industrialisation. Je réponds en même, en même temps à la question du Nigeria, mais bon, je, je vais le dire après. Euh, typiquement, on a financé un, un projet qu appelle, qui s'appelle Afrique Green, euh, qui euh, apporte des solutions au CNI et ça couvre également le Cameroun. Donc, on, on l'a signé euh, ce, ce mois-ci. Euh, C'est un projet, euh, une enveloppe globale de 100 millions euh, d'euros en Afrique de l'Ouest et en Afrique centrale. La SFI a participé à hauteur de 20 millions d'euros de participation dans ce fonds de dette. Donc l'objectif, c'est d'apporter euh, 
euh, des financements euh, et soutenir l'activité d'industrialisation sur la base de financement de projets CNI. Um, for, for the, um, I will switch in English, maybe for our um, uh, participants, the question from Nigeria in English also. Uh, just to mention that we, um, the Afri Green transaction I mentioned right now about financing CNI solution is also um, um, including Nigeria. And we have also some other transaction. We have finance in Nigeria, which is like this tax transaction in Nigeria, which is also focused on CNI and could be directed to small factories in rural communities. Because I understand that was the question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, no, mais si vous avez, vous avez le droit quand même, you, you can, if you want to make a last statement, you have one minute, you can use it. No? Ok. No, bah, c'est bon. Non, j'essaie je, de penser à tout le monde. Voilà. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I think with this, we are going to conclude the session. First of all, a big thank you to all our panelists. You have been great guys and girls. Um, and second of all, please visit the booth for the prospective initiative. No, seriously, I mean, for what I heard, I think it's great. And uh, let's enjoy some lunch. And, thank, and David seems to want to say something. Uh, so yes, let's close this. And David will make a statement just afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. As a last step uh, before lunch, and I thank you for your patience. Merci pour votre patience. On a juste encore un industry announcement qui va se faire par uh, Madame Ilham Talab. Donc le panel, merci pour votre participation. Et je laisse la parole à Madame Talab. Après quoi, il y aura en effet le déjeuner qui sera prévu. Ah ben dis donc, on est presque à 600 participants sur site. Euh, après cela, il y aura le déjeuner, on vous communiquera l'heure du début et de la fin du déjeuner exactement. Merci, à vous. Thank you. Merci. Thank you very much, David. And good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour. There goes 90% of my French. Um, I wish this mic was moving, but it's not. Can I use this? Does it work? Yes, great. Okay, since this is an announcement, we will make an announcement like this. Um, I would like to start by um, understanding a little bit more about who is in the room today. So I'm going to ask you to give me a shout out or just like a clap if you are a company, if you are a business owner uh, or a project developer. Come on. Very nice. Okay, so we have quite a critical mass, which is very good, because then you are in the right place, and um, I think this announcement will be relevant for you. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Ilham Talab. Very happy to be here, and thanks for this opportunity from Ari to give us this space to introduce Get Invest to you. And when I say you, particularly today, we're focusing on companies and project developers, business women and men in the room that are building on the ground. And what we're offering to you is to help you raise capital. Now, we heard throughout the morning, I think for me, if there is one word that I thought was repeated a lot, is investment. Everybody's talking about investment. We heard the European uh, Union delegation ambassador speak to us about the Africa EU Green Energy Initiative, which is already mobilizing hundreds of billions of euros to the sector, to the clean energy space, both on-grid and off-grid. And the question is, how are you, as companies and project developers, going to access that money? So we at Get Invest believe that this is a systemic problem. Systemic meaning that it keeps on repeating across different business models, market segments, geographies, and we think that we can help you um, uh, get there <laughs> or break the systemic mismatch between those that are looking for money and those that are providing money. So this is really what we do in a nutshell. There will be actually a bigger, more detailed presentation tomorrow by my colleague Christoph Both. so I encourage all of you to look for him tomorrow during the program, but today you get a sneak peek. Now, Get Invest, we are a European program. As I mentioned, our only goal is to help mobilize investments by uh, um, 
uh, working on this mismatch between those that are looking for funding and those that are providing funding. We operate in all uh, the sub-Saharan African countries, including in addition to the Pacific and the Caribbean islands. And in terms of uh, technology, we are pretty much agnostic. So we operate in the on-grid, off-grid space, also outside the electricity space. So clean cooking, energy efficiency, e-mobility as well, by the way, and recently also green hydrogen. We are um, supported by uh, the European Union, Germany, Sweden, the Netherlands, and Austria. And that's why our services are for free. And we are implemented by GIZ. Now, as I mentioned before, I said that we help break this mismatch between those that are providing funding and those that are looking for funding. And how we do that is the first column that we put here on this slide, which we call access to finance support. So what we do is we provide you with free of charge services, financial advisory services, business development support services, to help you throughout your fundraising journey. This could really be anything from working with you on your business model and financial model, investment strategy, really all the way to negotiating term sheets with an investor or investors actually. Most of the time there are a number of them involved in a single deal. Uh, we've been doing this since 2016, so seven plus years right now, and we've supported over 350 companies throughout these years. 130 of them were successfully introduced to financiers, and another 60 plus, 60 of them, and, and innovators from the countries. We realized just after COVID, or actually at the onset of COVID, that the sector needs special attention to locally owned and managed companies that do a lot of innovation on the ground, but for some reason they lack that capacity to access the available funding. So what we did at Get Invest is we have started a dedicated service only for locally owned and managed companies. Um, and this service is actually now actively supporting 34 different companies and, and, and businesses. Um, I'm really happy to say that two-thirds of them are actually women-owned or led companies. Um, they're, they're mostly in the off-grid and productive use space. So um, that's pretty much about ac uh, access to finance. The how do you access now our <laughs> access to finance uh, support? Also pretty simple. Through our website, there is a very simple application process. But there are so many of us here today, so I just encourage you to talk to us and we can take you through the, the process. It's a simple application that's available for uh, the whole time, basically 24 seven on our website. We also do through our activities support our partners, such as the Alliance for Rural Electrification. And I'd like to give a shout out to David and his team for the hard work behind the scenes to get us all here in one piece. Um, and uh, there are many more um, events coming up in the pipeline, so keep an eye on our website. And we also provide market information, including also prospect, what Thomas mentioned uh, just uh, during the previous panel. But also I'd like to highlight here what we call the funding database, which is a resource that I'm pretty sure that many of you will find very useful. If you go to our website, you can access it and search for um, different financiers. We have, I think, a list of over 120 um, live financiers and financing options. Now, probably this is the most also relevant slide for today, which is how can you find us and talk to us? There is a, a bunch of us here on, on, uh, on site. So on the white side, you see the program side. So Christoph is speaking tomorrow, Marie, Cesar, Dario, and myself are around. Jean actually fell sick and he could not make the plane. So he's not here with us today. And then on the green side, you, you see Maurice, Daphne, and Marcus, who are a, a part of the financial advisory team that does the access to finance work that I just mentioned before. They're all here. We have a booth somewhere there. <laughs> um, but I'm sure that you'll find us. Otherwise, you can find us in the corridors. Thank you very much for giving me your attention just before lunch. I know it has been a long day. But let's all build great projects together. And I wish you a fantastic event. Thank you very much, uh, Ilham, for this uh, announcement. And Get Invest has been our uh, main partner for many years, making all of this also possible for many years. 
But at a scale that is quite different now. We are nearly, we were hoping for 350 on site. We are nearly 600 today. Uh, and online, I don't even count anymore. So this is very, very good news because it means that we're onto something and that especially we can get these uh, business matchmaking juices flowing. So after a healthy lunch, which will end at 2.30, so you have time to talk, we will come back to the main program. There is a track two as well. There is the B2B, and especially do go to the exhibition. Just outside the door, there is a big tent. They have lots of booths there and air conditioning, so you are very welcome uh, to go there. See, get Invest, our booth, GBE, all the companies uh, are there. So, wish you a good lunch. See you at 2.30.